Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas and welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Celebrating with us today is Father Brandt and assisting him is Deacon Lou. Before we begin Mass, will you please join me in our parish prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious and loving God, we know that it is by your hand that our parish has been guided to create a faithful and supportive community. As we welcome all members to help build up your kingdom within our parish, we ask that you guide us to be the faithful stewards of the gifts you have entrusted to us by generously giving to the continued growth of our parish community. In doing so, we model the words of Mother Teresa, who reminds us to reach out to others in love and compassion, giving where it is most needed, and share the joy of loving with everyone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our entrance hymn is in the Breaking Bread Book, number 87, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 87 in the Breaking Bread. your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. see on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy 
give us the shining example of a holy family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal reward. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Readings from the older may be different to let. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. The mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sin and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly, plant, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you, the word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant. holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant. descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant. Remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant for.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you do also. And over all these part, over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection, and let the peace of Christ command your hearts, the penance into which you were also called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts on God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, Father, through him. The word of the Lord. God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, where the child grew and became strong and filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, this time of the year is the time for families to gather together to share their joys, their memories, and their gifts. And it's usually full of activity and planning for big dinners, searching for the perfect gift, fighting the crowds, cleaning the house. Now, in years past, we might have been worn out. We might have found ourselves going through the motions, wishing for all the craziness to be over. And we can settle back into a routine, is what we're looking for. Well, we might even be asking ourselves in this hectic time of the year, uh, why are we doing all of this? Are we doing it just for the sake of doing it? or is there some special importance to all? Well, this year I found that different. I found it different because due to COVID and the inability of families to get together over the last several years, uh, we uh, didn't have gift exchanges. We did that by drive-bys. We did group messages. We did Zoom openings. We kept ourselves separate. So this year, I was looking forward to all the hectic activity that goes on, where we could celebrate again at big dinners, where we can hear the same jokes from Uncle Amos telling him stories that he told time and time again. And we began to realize what, how important the family was in our lives, 
because maybe for the first time in years, we had a gathering that we couldn't have before. And that's important because it is through and in the family that we are nurtured and taught. We are welcomed, we are accepted, and we are supported and encouraged. It's through and in the family that we grow in strength and grace. And it is through and in the family that our talents grow, our vocations in life take hold and are nurtured. And we learn the true meaning of love, sacrifice, and forgiveness. It is in that family atmosphere that we find our roots and we spread our wings. And we don't always realize the significance of the importance of family life until we don't have it. And this year, I and my family found it again. And we see the importance of family in the scripture. In today's gospel, we have Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple for his purification. By coming to the temp temple as a family, they are joining their family to the family of the church. And then they return to Nazareth so that Jesus can grow up within the family structure in the context of the ordinary life of the family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Mary teaching Joseph to read and to pray. Joseph telling stories to Jesus of the Old Testament. Who can say that when Jesus laid a healing hand upon others and the sick, it was not the living attention of Mary, his mother, that served as the model for that healing touch. Or maybe later, when he shouldered his cross, and perhaps the image in his mind was that of Joseph, the workman, doing his duty for those that he loved. So families are where holiness grows in the everyday things that all families experience. It is the place of shared needs, shared sorrows, shared joys, and shared hopes. And we see ex and experience this holiness in the way we accept the inconveniences, the interruptions, the fears, the worries, the difficult days in family life. A family might say, well, I'm not holy, I just do what I have to do. But I see holiness in families when a mother stands by with a teenage child who seems, who seems neither kind nor uh, uh, appropriate. I see holiness in a family when a family member takes ill and does it all too early age and the family still stands by them when they are ill or when a sudden death happens and the family gathers around to support each other. I see holiness in that family. I see parents practicing patience and understanding and not giving in to irritation and anger. I see husbands and wives passion and shape each other, caring, loving, accepting, and forgiving partners in life. I see children growing in that family life despite all of the challenges in today's world. I see holiness in that family. And that is not to say it's always easy to live in family life. Sometimes there's turmoil, sometimes there's craziness. Family life is messy. That's the way it's supposed to be. And the way we deal with that mess, the way we deal with what happens is how we become holy. There are always going to be in on event, uh, inevitable misunderstandings and tensions, even within the happiness of family. But it's in accepting those challenges and dealing with them positively with faith and trust in the Lord that creates growth and understanding in all family members. It is that faith and trust in the Lord that gives all families the wisdom and the strength to grow. Within that family structure, we develop a sense of self when we be, where we learn a sense of compassion for others, where the seeds of sympathy for the needs of others are planted and properly tended so that they grow into a habit of serving others who come into our lives. It's where our faith is nurtured and becomes strong. It's in that everyday messiness of life that this happens. So it is in the context of our family life 
where families can become holy families. It is how we face difficulties and challenges. It's how we trust each other and accept each other. It's how we come to appreciate each talent of each member of the family. It's how we learn to trust in the Lord. It's how we learn to be for him to be with us on our journey. So as we begin the new year, let us try to refocus on our family life, on acceptance, on the messiness that we find every day, and to trust members of the family and treat them all with respect and love, to face challenges together and grow from both the happy times and the difficult times that lie ahead. That is what the model of the Holy Family teaches us, that the family is the place where we become who we are and who we are yet to be. Our families can be the place where the words of Scripture become reality and where holiness grows and we learn the meaning of the words, I love you, I respect you, I need you, I accept you, I cannot do without you. This is where holiness grows in that message. And a little later on the Mass after communion, we will all renew our dedication to the Holy Family of Nazareth. And may that be the first step this year that we do grow in holiness despite the messiness of family life. For the Universal Church, may the Holy Spirit continue to breathe courage and grace into the hearts of her leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of all people, may the Holy Spirit strengthen them in wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with disabilities, may God's strength be with them in their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of believers, may the example of the Holy Family inspire us in lives of virtue and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Joanne Williams, may God's love and mercy surround them and bring them into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Second collection is for our parish mortgage contribution program. Our hymn for the presentation and the gifts can be found in the Breaking Bread book, number 100, Cold Was the Stable, number 100.
and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, and humbly ask that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in this feast of the all-filled mystery, though vis invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that rising from the, raising up in himself, all that is cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels, we praise you as a joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the 
Simon was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, if you should enter unto my roof, I'd only say, Lord, and my soul shall be healed. is number 369 what feast of love number 369 in the breaking bread book stream of everlasting life, what precious blood is given. This, this is Christ the King, the sweetest wine of heaven. Oh, taste and see and see. sweet the man again. Come 
to Bethlehem and see in whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. See him in a manger laid, whom the angel praised above. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid while we sing our hearts. Most merciful Father, bring those you refresh with heavenly sacrament to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Entering into church today, you would have received a card for the dedication to the Holy Family. We're going to proclaim that consecration at this time. O Lord Jesus, you lived in the home of Mary and Joseph in Nazareth. There you grew in age, wisdom, and grace as you prepared to fulfill your mission as our Redeemer. We entrust our family to you. O Blessed Mary, you are the mother of our Savior. At Nazareth, you cared for Jesus and nurtured him in the season and joy of your home. We entrust our family to you. O oh, Saint, Saint Joseph, you provided Jesus, a secure and loving home for Jesus and Mary, Mary and gave, gave us a model of fatherhood, fatherhood while showing us the dignity of work. We entrust our family to you. Holy Family, we consecrate ourselves and our family to you. May we be completely united in the love that is lasting, faithful, and open to the gift of new life. Help us to grow in virtue, to forgive one another from our hearts, and to live in peace all our days. Keep us strong in faith, persevering in prayer, diligent in our work, and generous towards those in need. May our home, O oh Holy Family, truly become a domestic church where we reflect your example in our daily life. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us. Monday is a holy day of obligation. Now, it's a holy day, not of obligation. This is very confusing, as it was last weekend. It's less confusing. But the basic principle, which I said a couple weeks ago, weeks ago still it is uh, in place. The church doesn't provide two fruits. There's no two fruit. So then tomorrow, Sunday, we'll have our normal Sunday schedule, which will be the morning masses and 6 o'clock mass on Sunday night. Six o'clock Mass on Sunday night will count for the Sunday Mass for the Feast of the Holy Family. It's not the vigil for Mary, the Mother of God. Again, there's no two for it. So our um, Mass schedule for Monday, the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, is 9 o'clock and 12 noon. And that, again, is in the parish bulletin and on the website. 
Deacon Stitt and he will be showing a wonderful video series on the Holy Spirit starting January 9th. See, uh, this is free and charge, free of charge, and information is in the bulletin. The Preston's Pantry program is being conducted by Boyertown multi Area Multi Services. A collection container is in the chapel vestibule, and our SBC Parish Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a bus trip for the March for Life in Washington on February 19th. Limited seats are available. See flyer in the bulletin today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Our recessional hymn is number 90 in the Breaking Bread Book. Good Christian Friends Rejoice, number 90 in the Breaking Bread. Good Christian Friends Rejoice with heart and soul and voice give your key to one who we say jesus christ was born today ox and us before him bow and he is in the manger now christ was born today christ was born Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save.